I would like to talk to you today about three ways to prove that Catholicism is not biblical Christianity. Now I'm going to do this, this is the first time I've ever done this before in a video. What I'm going to do is, I have this all typed out, and I'm going to put this entire typed out thing here, the arguments to use, the scriptures, everything, all typed out. It will be in the description box down below, and also as a comment that I will leave as the very top pinned comment so that all you have to do if you want to if you see a Catholic video or something and you want to prove to them that they are not biblical Christianity then you just copy and paste what's down there description box or the comment and you put it put it onto the Catholic video or whatever else and boom um, it's not a bunch of hatred stuff or whatever else it's just scripture and the arguments used to prove that Catholicism is not biblical Christianity so let's go through this. Point number one, uh, three ways of the three ways to prove that Catholicism is not biblical Christianity. Number one, Catholics do not live by faith. All right? Living by faith is required as a Christian. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All right? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We are to live by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, and here's the point, says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now there's been a big argument between Catholics and Protestants over the years about justified by faith. This is not talking about justification in terms of eternal salvation. All right, I'm not talking about that because the Catholic thing, you get the, the Protestants, they'll say sola fide, by faith alone, you know, and the Catholics say, no, there has to be faith and works. I'm not talking about justification. What I'm talking about is in Roman Catholicism, they live by sight. And I'll get back to that here in just a minute. We'll go over a whole list of things where the Catholics live by sight. Um a Christian, we're not supposed to be seeing visual signs of our Christian faith and things all the time. Here, we walk by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But if you're a Catholic, they believe that they strengthen their faith by seeing churches, cathedrals, icons, statues, popes, special outfits, relics, incorruptible, quote-unquote, saints, etc. Uh, we have St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. We have all this, the Pope with the, the, we have the monstrance, and we have the golden staff with, you know, the little crucifix thing and whatever. It's constant sight, you see. So right there proves that Roman Catholicism is not biblical Christianity. You will not find one verse of scripture that ever told a Christian to build a building and call it a church. There's no scripture at all in the New Testament for that. That's why the Catholic Church has to overthrow the Bible with their traditions, you see, which again violates scripture. Um, but you see all these different things. Where is there a pope in here? Where are they carrying around pieces of the, of the true cross or something? It's not there. Oh, look, they have special uniforms on and they go down the street and, you know, and things and they the rosary and you're constantly pull, doing little beads and nowhere in the New Testament. That's why the Catholic Church has always been very, um, very careful about not letting their people read the New Testament. Because you start to read the New Testament, you say, wait a second here. Um, I'm not seeing all of this stuff that we see. See, Catholics don't live by faith. They live by sight. That's what makes them feel like we're part of the one true faith because after all, hey, look at all the big churches. Look at all this. Look at all the processionals and all the grand ceremony and then the priests swinging the incense thing and all that. They live by sight, not by faith. Second way to prove that Catholicism is not biblical Christianity is assurance of salvation. 1 John 5 verse 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Your written scriptures tell you how to be saved. And you can say, I can know that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Catholics can't say it. They say that's presumption. How dare you say that? You don't really know. You have to, you have to die in a state of grace, you see. 
you can't really ever know for sure that you're going to go to heaven. Uh, it's a problem. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, verse 1 down through verse 5 says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Yes, you can have assurance, much assurance of salvation. You don't have to wonder. And did I go to, did I confess all my sins at the confessional there? And where's that at, by the way, in scripture? Confessional there with the uh, holy priest that's celibate. And you have to go and tell him all about your dirty things that you've done and whatever. Um, no, it's not in the scriptures. I, w I hope I can make it to heaven. I, I think I might be able to. Then you're not a biblical Christian. The Bible says that you're to know that you have eternal life. You can have much assurance. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 through 14. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. I am a purchased possession according to the written word of God. That's how I can know that I'm saved. That's how I have much assurance. I am sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. According to the scriptures, I know I will be in heaven someday. Catholics can't know it. Catholics must continue to stay in God's uh, good graces by auricular confession, penance, and the Eucharist. Most will end up in purgatory after death for more purification. Roman Catholic doctrine. Okay, I'm not being hateful or intolerant or bigoted or whatever else. That's what the catechism teaches. And finally, the third way to prove that Catholicism is not biblical Christianity is few truly saved people. That's what the New Testament teaches. There's very few people that are actually saved. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Matthew chapter 22, verse 30 says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 says, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. Okay, right there, those two passages there, Matthew 22, 30, and Revelation 5, 11, completely knocks Roman Catholicism out of the picture completely destroys the Catholic lie. Why? Because in the resurrection, we are as the angels of God. John goes up there and he sees, he's in heaven and he sees round about the throne, a number of angels, redeemed saints in other words. I firmly believe that because the 24 elders are there, they're redeemed to God um, out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. Um, so they're Christians. It's not you know 12 Jewish patriarchs and 12 apostles. That's not true. It's out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. Two out of every one of the 12 boundaries, if you want to get into it. But the whole point is, John goes up there and he sees resurrected saints as angels of God in heaven. And he numbers, gives a specific amount of numbers there, um, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That's a number less than 200 million. It can't be beyond 200 million because 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million, but then it says thousands of thousands. So it could just be, you know, uh, 100 million and then a couple thousand after that or something. But the point is it can't be above 200,000, uh, 200 million, excuse me, 200 million um, saints up there. But yet the Catholic Church teaches that they have 1 billion saved members. 
Uh, I have written here, the Catholic Church has over 1 billion living members right now. How is this possible when there are less than 200 million saved people in heaven in the future? It's a problem. Um, 1 billion saved members of the Catholic Church right now, or 1 billion members of the Catholic Church, they can't say that they're saved, 1 billion members, and yet there's only 200, less than 200 million saints in the future, and that's the entire church age. How does that work? There'd have to be billions of you know, angels in heaven if the Catholic Church was right. If the Catholic Church is the church that Jesus Christ founded, then being a member of that church would eventually get you to heaven. I understand that they don't teach that you'd have that assurance that you'd go right to heaven, but the fact is you'd get there eventually through enough suffering and purgatory and people praying you for you and whatever else and rosaries being said, and, or not rosaries, but whatever, their prayers for the dead and things. You eventually get to heaven if you're a Catholic. How does that work when there's less than 200 million saints in heaven? Angels. See? Roman Catholicism is not Bible-believing Christianity. It's not the church that Jesus Christ founded. And I just proved it. Three different ways. And any Catholic out there, try to disprove me. Go ahead. You won't be able to. So, this will be the first of probably a number of videos where I'm going to do this. I will write out the scriptures and the arguments that you need to debunk certain systems. And I will put them in the description box, in the comment section. And then you can take those and copy and paste them and put them on heretical videos. Uh, this is one to kick Roman Catholicism shake up the Catholics enough to make them realize, you know what, um, I think I probably should stop following this and I should start to follow this. This is inspired by God. This is written by man. And see, if this was actually truly inspired, no, God gave this to us. It's, it's the traditions that God gave to us. Then it wouldn't contradict the scriptures. But this seriously contradicts the scriptures. And I just proved it right there. Roman Catholicism is going to lead you to hell. It cannot lead you to heaven. It's impossible. Uh, so that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.